for the smoothest, grooviest jazz, keep your ears tuned to West Coast Cool 98.1 FM. Catch the vibe. Be cool. In the heart of the night, all night long. Cool jazz on Gotham's 98.1 Cool FM. Time for some pillow talk? Let the greats whisper sweet nothings in your ear. Get some shut eye with jazz. 98.1 Cool FM. Mrs. Gardner's caution to Elizabeth was punctually and kindly given on the first favourable opportunity of speaking to her alone. After honestly telling her what she thought, she thus went on. You're too sensible a girl, Lizzie, to fall in love merely because you are warned against it and therefore I'm not afraid of speaking openly. Seriously, I would have you be on your guard. Do not involve yourself or endeavour to involve him in an affection where the want of fortune would make so very imprudent. I have nothing to say against him. He is a most interesting young man, and if he had the fortune he ought to have, I should think you could not do better. But, as it is, you must not let your fancy run away with you. You have sense, and we will expect you to use it. Your father would depend on your resolution and good conduct, I am sure. You must not disappoint your father. My dear aunt, this is being serious indeed. Yes, and I hope to engage you to be serious likewise. Well then, you need not be under any alarm. I will take care of myself and of Mr. Wickham too. He shall not be in love with me, if I can prevent it. Elizabeth, you are not serious now. I beg your pardon. I will try again. At present I am not in love with Mr. Wickham. No, I certainly am not. But he is beyond all comparison the most agreeable man I ever saw. And if he becomes really attached to me, I believe it would be better that he should not. I see the imprudence of it all. Oh, that abominable Mr. Darcy. My father's opinion of me does me the greatest honour, and I should be miserable to forfeit it. My father, however, is partial to Mr. Wickham. In short, my dear aunt, I should be very sorry to be the means of making any of you unhappy, but since we see every day that where there is affection, young people are seldom withheld by immediate want of fortune from entering into engagements with each other. How can I promise to be wiser than so many of my fellow creatures if I am tempted? Or how am I even to know that it would be wisdom to resist? All I can promise you, therefore, is not to be in a hurry. I will not be in a hurry to believe myself his first object. When I am in his company, I will not be wishing. In short, I will do my best. In the beginnings of international trade, the older countries exchanged their products for the raw materials and food produced by the new ones. Then, as immigrants from the old countries go out into the new ones, they want to be supplied with the comforts and appliances of the older civilizations, such as, to take an obvious example, railways. But as the productions of the new countries at their early stage of development do not suffice to pay for all the material and machinery needed for building railways, they borrow, in effect, these materials in the expectation that the railways will open out their resources, enable them to put more land under the plough and bring more stuff to the seaboard to be exchanged for the products of Europe. The new country, New Zealand or Japan, or whichever it may be, raises a loan in England for the purpose of building a railway. But it does not take the money raised by the loan in the form of money, but in the form of goods needed for the railway, and sometimes in the form of the services of those who plan and build it. It does not follow that all the stuff and services needed for the enterprise are necessarily bought in the country that lends the money. For instance, if Japan borrows money from us for a railway, she may buy some of the steel rails and locomotives in Belgium and instruct us to pay Belgium for her purchases. If so, instead of sending goods to Japan, we shall have to send goods and services to Belgium or pay Belgium with the claim on some other country that we have established by sending goods or services to it. But however long the chain may be, the practical fact is that when we lend money, we lend someone the right to claim goods or services from us, whether they are taken from us by the borrower or by somebody to whom the borrower gives us a claim. To be one of today's top models, you need poise, beauty and that elusive je ne sais quoi. Do you have what it takes? 
Find out on Wednesday's episode of So You Want to Be a Supermodel? Only on Fashionista TV. Think you're cut from the same cloth as Cindy, Tyra or Miranda? Enter our contest online to win a free trip for two to London to live the high life. Not only will you stay in the finest hotels, eat the most exquisite food and enjoy a sublime nightlife, you'll get to strut your stuff on the catwalk and hobnob with the fashion elite. So you're fired! Find out who the next candidate to get the boot is on The Recruiter tonight on Foxtel Channel 140. Need another reason to turn on the TV tonight? Guest star Heidi Klum co-hosts and makes a rumble in the boardroom that you don't want to miss. All this and more on Foxtel Channel 140. Andy has footy, Greta has swimming, James has league. When am I ever going to get out of the house? Oh, what's this? Mother Goose's nannies and sitters. This could be just what I need. Rest and relaxation away from the kids. I could spend more time with the girls. Have a shardy. Thanks to Mother Goose's nannies and sitters. I'm dialing the number right now. 95869780. Oh, let me just check that again. 95869780.